<laughs> oh, that would help. Start recharging now. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Community Development Committee meeting for um, the 25th of August, and a special welcome to the Youth Council. Fantastic to have guests in again, and um, especially you guys, of course. Yeah, too right. Hey, look, um, sorry, I'm just trying to pull up my agenda. <laughs> Fantastic. So um, apologies. We have no apologies. Confirmation of minutes. Do I have a mover? Uh, Madam Chair, happy to move those. Um, but we do have a committee member missing. Has there been no apology received from your worship? No. Right, that's just, just noting no. that for the minutes. No, no apology noted. Um, fantastic. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Carried. No notification of late items. Uh, do we have any declarations of conflicts of interest? Um, so we move to the presentation from the Manawatu Youth Council six monthly report. Zoe, over to you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Um, first of all, I'd just like to introduce some of our amazing councillors that have come along with me today. So we have Jesse, he's a second year councillor who intends to join us again next year. Um, and since joining the Youth Council, Jesse's played a huge role in the organisation of tons of our events, particularly the Colour Run. Um, then we have Grace. Grace is new to us this year um, and she's been doing some amazing work for our Youth Night Market. Um, and then Amali down the end, she's our health and safety advisor. She's new to us this year as well. Yeah, great job. Um, and she also does an amazing job at advi advising us of um, upcoming bylaws and stuff that we might want to submit on. Um, so thanks for having us here today. It's an excellent opportunity to come and chat to you guys about what the Youth Council have been up to, because um, it's been a pretty busy year for us. Um, so going back to the start of the year, we had our meetings on Zoom, thanks to prolonged COVID restrictions, um, which was a bit of a struggle for me as a new chairperson and for our new members as well, who haven't really been in that environment before. Um, so as we all know, Zoom meetings can be a bit of a struggle. Uh, so Steph and I delivered some protocols training for our new members and that went really well and it kind of helped them to feel more comfortable during our meetings. Um, and we saw a big improvement in kind of participation and stuff during meetings too, because um, those confidence levels were improved. We also saw some cool changes after Finn, our deputy chair and myself undertook some cheers training. Um, that was really cool. And we also had a leadership camp to Makura Lodge, which Grace is going to talk a little bit about. Yes, so at the start of the year, the Youth Council attended a camp at Makura Lodge. We did many fun activities like a scavenger hunt and the Highland Games. Mm. This was really cool because we obviously hadn't met, as Zoe said, in person yet. So we got to get to know each other a bit more, which was cool. But besides all that fun stuff, we also did some of the nitty gritty stuff, we got to learn about how meetings should run, what the council looks like and things. We did this by brainstorming, did some little modules, which is really cool. And I think everyone really benefited from it and learned so much. Yes, yeah. 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 And since then we've really gelled together um, super well and worked yeah. well as a team, which is cool. Amali, did you want to chat about our submissions and what we've done this year? Uh, yeah. So our uh, youth council is here every week together. Uh, so the feedback for policies and bylaws in the community. Um, being involved in the community <coughs> that needs to be represented. Um, sorry, <laughs> what's it? Can be represented in big decisions that are being made. Um, as a young council, having the opportunity to, to submit for different bylaws gives, gives young people that chance to be involved in the community. The youth council has been involved in a few policies and bylaws this year, including 
the Horizons Regional Public Transit Plan and the Manitou District Council Waste Assessment. One of our committee members, Paul Dinger, who was a year back at Harrison of Boys High, spoke on behalf of us at a meeting regarding the Horizons Public Transit Plan. The level of involvement that we are able to undertake is what I enjoy most about being a part of the Youth Council. I've been lucky enough this year to have read through and organize our council submission. Uh, and this has really stood out to me as what we are inputting into the community as Youth Council this year. Yeah, thank you. So submitting on the stuff that Amali's just mentioned um, has allowed us to not only represent a youth voice um, from the community, but also learn a lot along the way as well. Um, so knowing what council are up to is super important and having this information out there and available to give feedback on has been extremely beneficial. Yeah. Do you mind if I just make a comment? Um, yes. I did see Corbin do this um, presentation at Horizons and they asked him some really tricky questions and he had the answers. He was really well prepared. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. so cool to have him. Yeah, go on. especially yeah, to a Yeah, yeah. yeah. so I can't meet Corbin. Yeah, he did an outstanding yeah. job. Did yeah, so working with a range of different people and um, organisations has been a goal of ours this year, and I believe that we've really managed to achieve a great deal in this space. We've had a range of people present at our meetings um, on a range of different issues, and we've also taken advantage of a few networking opportunities at um, the Manawatu Young Chamber opening and the Sorta Expo in Palmy as well. Um, so this is the time of year that we all get pretty busy, we have three awesome events coming up, not to mention the amazing success that was the in-zone careers coach that was offered at Building High School a couple of months ago. Yeah, um, so the first event coming up uh, next month is our Youth Night Market on the 30th of September. So that is sort of building off uh, the Youth Festival that was started last year. So we just, um, this year we're looking to make it sort of bigger than it was last year. So just going off that. Um, the next event is the Color Run on the 3rd on the 16th of October, sorry. Um, so yeah, we haven't had the Color Run in two years and it'll be, it's going to be really good to get it back up and running with the Color Run around to my park and the house of color and so on. Um, <laughs> and then our final event of the year is the Young Achievers Awards on the 1st of November, I believe. Um, so that's always a pretty big event and there's just a lot of planning going on with that. Yeah, we have some super cool events coming up and it's really cool to be able to get out into the community and, and see our hard behind the scenes work pay off as well. Um, our events are super special and I love seeing people enjoying what we've organised for them. Um, but feel free to fire through any questions if you have any. <coughs> Councillor Casey. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. I just think it's worth noting for the record that the Youth Council, pound for pound, like you guys, produce so many good events, both so such good work, and it really is um, a group of young people who are, uh, I think, just excelling beyond what is expected. So I just really want to encourage you to keep up the good work, and it's to work with you is an absolute delight, and you know, it's always a privilege to work alongside you. Um, especially the naming events coming up. So we've got a really busy calendar before the end of the year. So again, just, just thank you for what you do in the community. Thank yeah, you. I mean, mm. yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. No, oh, I'd second that, Councillor Casey, I think. Thank you. It's, um, oh, it's huge what you guys are doing outside your skill gate. And I think that that's to be noted, you know, you're going above and beyond what a lot of your peers are doing. And um, the sense of community that you guys have and, and the desire to actually help our community and give them things to do is really cool and bring other people on your journey is so cool. Um, and you've been very lucky uh, to have Steph as well, helping you guys along the way. I think she's been a huge angel for your, for your, your guys' mm. help. Um, and so I think we couldn't have done it without her as well. So thank you, Steph. Yeah, I agree. Yep. Totally. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Look, if there's no other questions or comments um, on that, I'm happy to move to item 7.1, the Manawatu District Youth Council six monthly performance report to June 2022. Um, are, you, are you moving that, uh, Chair? Because I'm happy to seek a dip. Uh, item 7.1. Oh, we're just noting that, aren't we? Does we're just noting. Page nine. Yeah, that the Manawatu yes. District Council. So, like well, we had the report, which was 6.1. And then, so now we're on page nine. Yeah, very good. There's a recommendation. Would you like me to move that? 
You can go ahead, Councillor yeah, Casey. No problem. That the Manawatu District Council, East Council, six monthly performance report to June 2022 be received. Happy to second that. Um, all those in favour? Aye. Aye. Carried. Awesome. Fantastic. Thanks so much for coming along, guys. Have a great day at school. Yeah, <laughs> good luck, guys. Thank you. Yeah, good luck, guys. Go ahead, some applications for next year for the youth council. You're coming. Oh, thank, you. thank you. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. There we are. Right, um, that was really cool to have so many of them in. Um, so now we move down to the Manawatu District Youth Council review of terms of reference and role descriptions. Um, Steph, did you want to go through this? I think um, everyone's had the documents. Yeah. And it's pretty self-explanatory that we needed to... A few admin after, changes. After um, two or three years of Youth Council running to be able to go through and have a bit of a tidy up. Yep. And, and actually um, improve on the, the base that we started with. And I think that the recommendations are, are for both are in line with how the youth council is running. I think if I can note um, through you, Chair, it's just a continual evolution of the committee, really. And it's a positive evolution. Sometimes committees just sort of, just sort of internally collapse, whether it's a culture issue or not. But it's a positive culture within the youth council. And I think that the work around the terms of reference is appropriate. Reinforces that thanks to you, Steph, yeah, to be exactly. fair. You know, yeah. huge amount of work from you to go through this line for line and um and highlight the changes needed. So thank you for doing that. Um I'm happy to put the recommendation. Oh, I just oh. have one question. Um, there's nothing, there's things in there that you know what what the members, what's expected of the members, what's expected of the chair, what's expected of the deputy chair, what's expected of the elect members to the youth council, but there's no reference in there to what the council will do for them. Mm. Um, it's in the terms of reference. There is a place in, in the terms oh, of I reference. Oh, I am the terms of reference. Um, we don't do in terms of reference. Two, um, there were two documents. One was the role descriptions and the terms of reference that actually states what the council will provide for the youth council. Sorry, I don't have it with me, but it's pretty up. Oh, okay. Document. That's uh, that's seven point two B terms of reference. So if you click on the on the table of contents. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Seven point one on page twenty seven. Training for members. So it says, in return for their commitment, MDC will provide members with an annual training and team building day or weekend, an induction explaining the youth. Sorry, I was Are you there, the Alison? Um, I was on the wrong document, sorry. No problem. Yep, no, it was about that you know, training. Training clearly has made all the difference. Oh, potentially, you know? and we've implemented so much. <laughs> that weekend was vital for them to actually get to know each other because like, we assume that they go to school together so they know each other, but they actually... A lot of them don't. It's a big school. It's a big place. And um, for them to spend that weekend together is just vital. Um, so... And may I also say there are members on our youth council who don't go to field high school. Absolutely. So yep. that exactly. is also really important for them to actually chill with the, with the others that do. Yep. Um, and now you couldn't even tell. Um, so, look, I'm happy to move the recommendation that the Community Development Committee reviews the amended role descriptions in terms of reference of the Manawatu District Youth Council and recommends to Council that they be adopted. Have I got a seconder? I a seconder. Your Worship, all those in favour? Aye. Aye. Carried. Aye. Fabulous. We're now down to page 30. The Community Development Strategy Relationship and Liaison Report. Janine. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this is just the standard report, just to bring to the committee's attention um, some of the meetings that I have attended to represent uh, council on. Um, but I have included, uh, for this particular report, um, the Age Friendly Network, which is, is a new group that I have recently joined and that is through the Ministry of uh, with, um, Seniors and uh, so that's just a, a network of um, similar roles like myself 
throughout New Zealand with uh, TLAs. So that's a good um, opportunity to get together and talk about what each TLA is doing in their particular patch when it comes to our, our more senior community. So I'll just attach those for your information. Um, but uh, Councillor Short may like to give you a bit of an update in regards to the Mental to Health and Wellbeing Group as their current chairperson. <coughs> Um, it's a bit of a fluid space at the moment and um, some of the faces that we're used to dealing with um, from the former DHB um, have moved to new roles. So, um, so Angela's moved into a new role. Um, so we're sort of just finding our way over the next few months. They don't even know where we're going either. So it's um, quite an interesting space at the moment. But the one thing I will comment on, on the various things that um, I, I attend that Janine also goes to is agencies everywhere are talking about people struggling with the cost of living um, and uh, all demographics don't make any presumptions about who's struggling with the cost of living um, and many agencies uh, supporting families with things like food. So more than just the food banks, others are you know, churches and Kofoto, et cetera. So just to be aware of that some people are doing it really tough. Yeah. Um, Alison, I see that there is um, the potential for um, Iwi and Tereru to come on board. Are they, um, is it progressed? We discussion. Um, it's whether they've got the capacity to do that or not. Because with with the all the marae down to a lot of them don't live in the district. Some of them live outside of the district. Um, and they've had a couple of losses of key members out there recently, like Kipper. Mm. Um, so Dennis was going to ask at their more wider Rohi meeting whether anyone would be interested in representing them. Um, in the past, it was it was a vacancy because we couldn't fill it. It wasn't that we hadn't asked them in the past. Yeah. So uh, we'll we'll hear back uh, whether there's been any progress on that in the next meeting. Oh, that was cool. Um, that they're even interested. Um, were there any other comments or questions around those minutes? No. Big thank you to Janine and um, and Alison predominantly for attending those meetings. Um, I understand that there's a bit of time goes into going to those meetings, and I think it's important that NDC is sort of all over those issues. Mm. Um, do I have a mover on page 30? Uh, if I can get there, I'm happy to move that. There we go, page 30. Uh, that the reports from the community groups the period 10th of June 2022 to 11th of August 2022 be received for information. I'm happy to second that. Yeah. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Carried. We now head down to funding accountability reports to 11th of August, 2022. I just need to get there myself. Right, page 57. Janine. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we've received two accountability reports since our last meeting. Uh, one was the event fund uh, accountability report from Whanuatahua, Beautiful Families Trust, or Matariki. Mm. And the second one was the representative funding accountability report from Joshua Humphreys, which the members of the committee may recall, um, he actually attended the public forum um, and gave councillors an update on his experience down in uh, Christchurch with his swimming. Um, no further comment from myself personally, apart from that it was awesome to see Joshua have the confidence to come and talk to us as a council and um, that the Market for Mathery here celebrations looked huge and um, great thing for our community to be involved in. And um, <coughs> look, I think our fund, another example of how our funding goes such a long way in the community development space. Alison. Yeah, I just wanted to comment on the Matariki Festival. I think that's about, was it about year five? Something like that. Yeah, it's for you, Madam Chair. Yes, mm. I believe it um, is. I think it's yeah. got bigger and better every year. And uh, as you know, Ra um, is the MC, does a fantastic job um, and made it sort of um, fun competition between the schools and things. Lots of teachers and parents got involved as well. Um, it was really good to see. I did talk to Delia uh, during the um, 
uh, performance and said, you know, just got one thing missing, Delia. I said, you need to come to creative communities and we need this awesome big banner behind you saying Matariki and one that we can reuse each year. She said, oh, well, I'll find out how we go about that. So. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Um, it's funny you should say that, uh, Alison, I think that Matariki that Festival's got the ability to be a significant event uh, here. <coughs> and I think it's almost, you can almost see it heading down to Manfield, eh? Into the uh, into the larger, it's just got that it's just got that feeling about it. But uh, just just note, congratulations, and it's good to have an event out of COVID as well, mm. where everyone can just come together and just hang out. Yeah, it's great. Mm -hmm. So good. Um, did I have a mover? Um, Fifty-seven. Glasses. Like to move that the Community Development Committee receives and notes the following accountability reports. Event fund accountability for Fana Atahua Beautiful Families Trust representative funding accountability report for Joshua Humphreys. Do you have a seconder? That's the Casey. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Carried. Fantastic. Page 87, we're now on the schedule of funding applications. Janine. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, during the period since our last meeting, we have received 14 applications. Of those, six were community development fund, three representative, and five event fund applications. So attached to your agenda, you'll see the schedule, which um, identifies how much has been allocated and how much is remaining in kitty. So you can see with exhausted quite a, a, a big chunk of our funding mm. so far this year, which I guess will be um, quite sobering towards the end of the financial year when we may not have anything left to be able to distribute. <clears throat> but a wide range of uh, applications for different activities, particularly in the community development fund space. Mm. Uh, there was one application you'll see that was declined, which was the House of Science New Zealand. Um, they were looking to deliver their resources in the Horafenua and Manawatu area, but unfortunately they were unable to actually demonstrate within their application how much of that delivery was actually in the Manawatu area right. uh, because they were based in Shannon. Um, so it's a lesson for the organisers and they will certainly be seeking to apply again in further funding rounds to actually demonstrate that. Um, if the attached is also the checklist for <coughs> each of those applications, just to give uh, members uh, an idea of more information on the actual applications themselves and the decisions that were made under delegated authority. Councillor Short. Um, sorry, I neglected another um, conflict of interest. I completely forgot until I saw that item. Um, so I'll declare a conflict of interest in the Martin Young Farmers. Uh, application to the community development fund. Two of my daughters belong to Martin Young Farmers and are actually going to do the course at the farm. So I shall stand back from that. <coughs> Councillor Casey, did you yeah, have. Just two comments. Uh, one's, a, one's a comment, one's a question. Uh, great to see the Fielding Scout Ventures uh, fire back up again. I think they've been a bit quiet over the last sort of decade or so. Another excellent um, youth group as well. So that's good for um, youth development in their area. And the other one is just through either Councillor Short or Janine, the House of, House, sorry, House of Science NZ. I remember when I first came on board council a while ago now, we had a, a couple would go around and deliver science kits to schools. Is this the same crew or similar or not at all? That's through you, Madam Chair. Yes, it is the same. It is the same. It is the same crew. Yeah, yeah. I wondered what, uh, what was happening with them for, for quite some time. Mm. Yeah, so they'll deliver science, literally deliver science kits to schools. And then they go around and pick pick them up again. They had this whole, all these kits circulating throughout the um, throughout the region. Yeah, yeah. Uh, any other questions or comments on those? Uh, 
Okay, well, I'm happy to move the recommendation that the Community Development Committee receives and notes the schedule of applications received and processed under delegated authority in accordance with the Community Development Policy for the period 10th June 2022 to 11th of August 2022. Have I got a seconder? Councillor Balski. Oh, was that a question or a seconding? No, no, second. Um, all those in favour? Aye. Carried. Sorry, people, I'm just trying to get to, I think we're moving to public exclusion now, are we? What's that, sorry? No consideration. No, cons no consideration of late items. So that means we move to uh, public excluded. Do I have to move that we move? Yep. Uh, I move that we move to public excluded. Have I got a second there? Uh, Her Worship, all those in favour? Aye. Uh, Carriage, fantastic. Thanks, Mark.